Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Okay, so... Today we want to make the true choice of being able to, to just be ourselves to our fullest without this worry about what others think. And we, and that's not the choice. The choice is just being able to be us to the full period. Uh, the, the, the big challenge that a lot of us uh, have or uh, face is Whenever we're wanting to create something, in that creation is number one, what will others think negatively about me? And then two, well, how will others perceive me if I go and achieve that? And, and what's interesting is they're both actually linked, okay? Like hot is linked to cold. Uh, enjoying other people's praise is linked to really disliking their criticism. Does that make sense? They're linked. When does cold turn to hot? Somewhere around about warm, which is abstract, isn't it? And so what we've got to realize is if that we're making creations and we think to ourselves, you know, when I do this, this, this is what people will think about me. And it feels so good when they say good things about me. And that is intrinsically linked to if I do this and people say bad things about me. Mm. Right? So, so what I had to realize when I was doing this work, and you'll realize today, is that I just need to do it for me. Just do it for doing it. I know that some people might love it, good for them. Some people might hate it, good for them. It's really about me doing my work. Does this make sense? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you shouldn't listen to your market, okay? I'm not saying that you shouldn't find things that the market will like so that you can, you know, you can uh, have a successful business, right? I'm not, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, I think it's very important to listen to the market. What I'm saying is, is, is tying your worth, your uh, success to what they think. And so that, that is really what we're doing here. We want you to be able to be you to the fullest, be you to the fullest to be able to, to go out there and just do you, for, for, not for doing you for praise. And, and a lot of people I talk to, uh, you know, that they... They say, oh, Chris, I got this amazing message, you know, or all these people love this and they love it. It feels so good. And, and I, I can tell that for some, for some, they're so, 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 so much more focused on making sure other people say that they are doing good than actually winning. And what I mean by that is, if I actually look at their behavior, their behavior shows me that they'd prefer to avoid rejection than actually have success. They would prefer others to say, you're awesome, than to actually go out there and really create what they desire. Do you see that? So their actual preference, and they don't like to admit this, by the way. They say, no, no, that, no, no, Chris, uh, you know, um, you know, no, I'm going for what I want. See, I say, go do a video. No, no. I, uh, okay, yeah, I'll do a video. Have you done your video? No, I haven't done my video. Why not? Oh, because, you know, I don't look this or I got to have this or blah, da, 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 da. And I say, the, the key to being good at videos and building an audience is first to be really bad. Go do it. Or, you know, I say, uh, you've got 100 leads. And, oh, Chris, I've got 100 leads to my webinar. Only five people turned up. I say, call them, call those 95 people and sell them. No, no, I don't want to call them. I don't want to bug them. I don't want to do this. I don't. Why? Because I prefer to be broke 
This is what's actually going on. Then I prefer to be broke than to have a few people get annoyed at me. You see, that's what they're saying. So they're saying, I, I'm not actually going to be successful. Does that make sense, guys? Give me a yes if you get this. It's like their action shows me. Their action shows me their preference is that everyone likes them. You see, that is actually what they want. And they don't actually want success because they even ridicule and laugh at people who on the journey to success have haters, have others who think that they're bad. I don't know a single successful person on the planet, successful creator, that has 100% of people think that they're doing the right thing. In fact, I even think the word having haters is, is just people that disagree with you. You know, it's not even a big deal. It's just like, oh, okay, a bunch of people disagree with me. Well, fine, good. They agree with something else. It actually means nothing to what you're doing. And what, but, but if you truly want to be a creator, you think about all the politicians out there, right? They only have to have 51% of people, you know, want it their way or in some coalitions, not even that. You see, that means that half of them don't like them. And then every decision, uh, I, I was at a talk with uh, one of Australia's greatest prime ministers and uh, Howard, and he said, you know, at any time, if you can have 20% of the population agree with what you're saying, you're doing really well, you know? And I was like, that means 80% of a country is, is not happy with the decision, you know? So it's, it's very... Um, <laughs> it's very interesting to think about this is, is to have, you know, this, this internal, uh, this internal barometer just saying, I'm just doing me, not I'm doing this. What is everyone else going to think of this? You see? And, and that's, that's really, really, re and by the way, he, he was regarded as, you know, Australia's most loved prime minister. Where are my Aussies on here? Right. And, uh, and, and so, it's a big thing that we're talking about. It's a big, big, big session today. And, and so this first point is this, is that to the extent that you desire praise from others is the extent that you, you reject or want to avoid criticism. Okay. They are, they are the, they are the same thing. And so the truth is, is you just got to do you, you, and some people will love it. Some people won't. Right. And that's just how it's going to be, but you can't get all caught up in all these things. Right. If I have this, well, then I used to have an idea. If I made a lot of money and employed a lot of people, well, then everyone would love me, right? If I helped a lot of people, right, then of course the world would, would praise me. Right? And I would never say this out loud, but it was in my actions. And the truth was I made a lot of money and a lot of people thought that I was bad for that. And some people thought it was good. And I helped a lot of people, right? And then out of all the people I helped, there were also a bunch of people who took my programs and didn't, weren't successful. And I'd get so stressed out about this. I would, instead of focusing on the, the group that was being successful and loving it, I'd focus on the people that weren't loving it. And I'd try to fix it and I didn't want any negativity. And if, you know, I'd get mad at them and I would have all of these ideas. Instead of just going, well, it's, it's not about that. And I remember just making the decision, I'm just going to create a good product. I think it's good. I'm going to ensure the majority of people are enjoying what, what they're getting from it. And, it. and it freed me. I used to have this idea, 100% of people have to get results. Why? You know, 100% of people trying to get results is, uh, is, is you're held captive to them. How many people know if a gym had to base its success on 100% of people that attend the gym getting results. Can you see how frustrating that's going to be? You see? Because what are they doing? Is they're basing their success on what other people can control. So here's my point. You can't control that. Coaches, my coaches who are on here, you will, you will not have 100% success. 
because there's a, gr a bunch of people that are not ready for change, don't actually want the change, aren't willing for the change, and you just get to be a stepping stone to someone, something else. In fact, this started happening to me about six years ago. People would come to me and they'd say, oh, Chris, I'm so glad I found your marketing program because I just went to so-and-so and they are shit. They are so bad. I'm so glad I found you. And I would go, oh, wow, it would feel really good. I'd go, oh, yeah, yeah. And they'd say, yours is your marketing program, Chris, so much better than theirs. And I used to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, it's better. And then <laughs> I would hear from these other people that people who had come to me were then telling them about how bad mine is and how good theirs is. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 you got it wrong. People tell me about yours is bad and mine is good. <laughs> and then I and then I was like, and I sat down with this guy one time, and so we looked at our programs and we, we pulled them apart, and they were so similar, <laughs> you know. And like the, the the problem, what was is when the person did the first one, they weren't really ready to be successful. So the first program would have them move to here, right? And it would open them up and they'd go through challenges and they would finish. And they, they would have only made little, little goals, but they're still in the same tension. So they thought, you know what? It's not me, it's that program. So then they would go, well, screw that Duncan character, and they'd go by this next person's program, but they would get to the next person's program in a different mindset, because I moved them from negative 10 to zero. So they turn up to the next person at zero, and then they go and win, and they'll give this person a big testimonial. And sometimes I had spent like a year pulling hair out, trying to get this person's mindset right, trying to get them in the right place, then they'd go by this next person's program and go in. And you'd sit there going, holy crap. Why, you know? And they'd even do these videos. Yeah, I spent tens of thousands of dollars on these other people's programs and they didn't work. And I'd sit there. I remember being so upset. I'm like, that's talking about me. That's talking about me. And so what I had to realize is like, it actually wasn't me because then their people would come to me and have the same experience. Give me a yes if you're hearing this, is I was so thinking that it was me, that, that, that I did something wrong, that I was being rejected, or that, uh, or that I was being better in those other instances, and my success was so tied up to them. But it was completely different. Same with relationships, right? You know, I, I know guys who sometimes, uh, you know, they, they say to themselves, yeah, you know, uh, like a... You know, this, this lady rejected me, you know, this, and I put a lot of effort into it, everything else. And, you know, I was a coworker and, uh, you know, we had all this chemistry and all this vibe and everything else. And then I finally asked her out and she said, no, you know, and then they make up this whole story about how bad it is, everything else, blah, 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 blah. And they didn't even know. And they, years later, they met her again and, and, and reconnected and asked why. And they didn't realize that at that time, you know, their, their, uh, their father had just been admitted to hospital and was going through this huge thing. And this person just didn't feel like going out or being social at all or having anything to do. They had this big thing over here. But this guy, his whole life, had held on to this rejection, you see, thinking, well, screw this, the, the love of my life. She said no. And he'd just gone bang and gone the other way. Didn't see it from the other perspective. And so we, we can hold on to this idea that – that other people is opinions, other people's uh, uh, judgments on us are a really important thing rather than just being centered, being solid. And that's what we want to get to. Okay. We want to get to that. We want to be solid. You know, uh, you know, this person maybe doesn't have a, you know, is going to reject, you. you know, you're out there, you're talking, you're presenting some great information. And this person here, as you're speaking, they, they have a completely different belief system that is so scared for change. So instead of accepting that, they fire it at you. And then you think you've done something bad because you're, you're basing your, uh, you know, your success of your talk on a standing ovation, 
right? I've had standing ovations. I've had crickets. I've had all sorts. I've spoken to 140,000 people in 13 countries. And, uh, and sometimes it goes really well. And sometimes it doesn't. I remember my first time talking in Singapore. And I was like, uh, you know, I, I said the normal phrase, like a best thing since sliced bread. And uh, it was part of a joke. And I think most of us here in Western society know what I mean when I say the best thing since sliced bread, but they don't say that in Singapore. <laughs> so I did this whole joke and then that was the punchline. <laughs> You've never heard 3000 people be so quiet when the presenter thinks everyone's going to laugh. <laughs> so now I just laugh at myself. But anyway, this is, this is what we want to get to. We want to get to a point where you're able just to be you and do you instead of being you and doing you in the hope of getting some praise, you see, in the hope of getting something back, you see. Rejection can only happen when the power is given away. If you're not asking for anything, if you're not expecting anything, anything rejection can't happen rejection can only happen when you're expecting something if you're just giving if you're just giving there's nothing to reject it can only be rejected when you have an expectation of getting something back if you're just giving if you're just asking, if you're just there, you know, people can't reject that. You're just, you're not expecting anything back. So, so we've got to get to a place where you're just giving. You're just giving and you're listening, but you're enjoying the giving. You we're enjoying it. I've got, I got a friend of mine who gets annoyed because he's, he's feels rejected or let down by business partners. You know, he gives them ideas and they turn to nothing. Just enjoy the giving without the expectation back. So we want to just get into the joy of being and giving, giving love. And if the person isn't willing to give it back, you see where the, the upset comes. Well, I gave you love and you didn't give it back. I liked you and you didn't like me back. Instead of just the enjoyment of the giving of, of the act. So we want to get into a creative, a creative structure for this first. Okay. And, uh, and I want you to just to step into, you know, just, just being you to the full, just giving you and just being it and enjoying the giving. Have the joy in the art, have the joy in the music, have the joy in the living. And just that, just that, period. Just that. So let's all choose that. I choose to be me to the full. I, whatever you want to write as your choice, I choose to just give. I just choose to just get. And so let's just step into that reality. I, I, I feel like I've, I've got your, your um, consciousness there. You're ready to step into it. So um, if you're on a replay or if you're on live, step into that, close your eyes, step into that, that version of you now and just choose it. I choose to be like that. I choose to just give no expectations. I choose to just be me to the full. I just choose to give. I choose to give my best. And I'm just going to give my best. Mm, just choose to give your best. Just feel that. I choose to do my best, give my best. And just notice that sometimes, sometimes people love that. Sometimes they think it's not enough, but just know that you can just choose. You just give your best. Mm, just choose that. Feels so good. All right, come back, open your eyes. Feel so good just to give your best. That's it. Do your best. Give your best. It's in your control. 
You know, when you just give your best, if it, if it's if if it gets judged or rejected, you're just choosing to give your best, give your all. Okay, so now let's notice what it's like now compared to just choosing to give your best. Just do it. Let's get the second, the well, the third step or the second big thing, right? Uh, you know, Patricia says if they can't receive their loss, not really. Not really. Let's not put judgment on them. Just it's got nothing to do with them. And I want to catch those things because not just I'm just choosing to give my bet. I'm not I'm not associated to their loss, their win, whatever. That's them. I'm just giving me. I'm just giving me. I'm not I'm not attached to it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. We're gonna deal with the blocks. We're gonna deal with the blocks. No, no, like I I know I know what you think, but but um that statement is um it's a good one but but it's it's the focus is unnecessary even if it's just a five percent focus of well if it's theirs their loss it's like there's a part of you that's going there does that make sense like even if you're saying well chris it's only a little bit well it's a it's a little bit i just want to say just just nothing there just you just give you just you give you okay so let's go into the uh the now what's it like now compared to that What's it like now compared to that? And just tune into it. Just notice what it's it like now. Yeah. I do care what others think. Yeah. I love it when I get praise. It feels good when people say I did good. And uh, it feels bad when people say that, you know, oh. And just, and just, just feel it. Just notice what it's like now. Yeah. And we don't have to stay there very long, so just notice it. And so let's um, let's let's really unpack this. Let's really unpack this. So the first question, um, yeah, fair enough. Who's who knows that your success is really tied to their response? Yeah, a lot of us going. Yeah, yeah. Right now, this is big. I'm addicted to praise. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, cool. This is going to be a big one. Okay, so we know our true choice. We know we are now. So, so let's let's really, um, you know, let's let's really think about this. Whose praise do we want the most? Whose praise do you want the most? Is it mom? Is it dad? Is it brother, sister? Is it a certain childhood friend? Whose criticism do you want to avoid the most? And it doesn't matter if they're passed away. They're still sitting in your unconscious of you still want to be a good boy or a good girl for that person. Um, receiving car a different it's a different energy um, so that would be a different a different focus choose the end result of choosing to be able to receive yeah it's a I'm not good enough for you yeah so so who do you really want to get praise from who do you really want to avoid criticism from Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of us are saying, I really want to avoid criticism from people I don't know. And I really want to get praise from people I do know. Yeah, it's interesting. Just those are, those are, those are just interesting questions. So, so what does praise mean to you? What meaning, what meaning do you give praise? What does it mean when some, when you're, when you're praised? Yeah, and so what does it mean to be good? I'm validated. What does it mean to be validated? I'm worthy. Just notice what it means. I Yeah, I exist. I'm there. I'm acknowledged. I'm accepted. I'm worthy. I'm capable. Yeah. Yeah.
means they're not backstabbing me. I'm noticed, not invisible. Yeah, nice. These are all good. So what does it mean to be criticized? Rejected. What meaning do you give that? Yeah, I have a mentor of mine and has made hundreds of millions of dollars. He wrote one book, sent this, this book to a friend of his. His friend said it wasn't a good book and he stopped dead in his tracks. And this is a, you know, 10 figure earner. Couldn't get over that his friend said the book wasn't good. Didn't go back and fix it. Yeah, I, I see you. I, I see that, Patricia. But just, just uh, you know, that, try to go past the logic. Um, some people do just reject you. Promise. When I, when I, um, when I put myself out there, some people just go, "You're stupid," <laughs> you know, <laughs> and this is absurd and crazy and everything else. Yeah, some people are just going to have. Um, some people are just going to completely criticize and reject you. No, it's, it's me. It's me for sure. You know, um, they reject me. They reject the message. They reject spirituality. They reject, uh, meditation. They reject it. They say that's shit. I don't like that. And they criticize and it's fine. And it's so good. Cause you know what? I do it too. And we all do it. We all do it. So, okay. So, so we're, we're unpacking this. We're unpacking this and we're, we're looking at, at, uh, at rejection. So can you remember a specific time where, you know, rejection really hurt? Was it by some friends? Was it by a loved one? Was it a, an intimate relationship? Yeah. And so, so just, I just want you to really ask yourself out of, out of 10 right now, when you think about that moment, like how much do you want to, how much do you resist rejection? How much do you resist rejection? Like I'm not going to be rejected. I am going to be loved and praised. Cool. So yeah, true. True, we can rationalize rationalize it. Yeah. So let's just get a number. Yeah. Cool. All right. So it feels like everyone's there and ready. So let's, um, let's do a double bubble on this. We're going to put on one side of the double bubble. I choose, uh, I choose for everyone to love me and praise me. And on the other side, I choose everyone to reject me criticize me, everyone I love, society, everything. Okay, so I choose everyone to love me, I choose everyone to reject me. Okay, those are gonna be the two, the two sides. Now when we do double bubble, what happens is, is we go into the choice that we think we don't want. So I'm going to choose that everyone rejects me, okay? 
And so as you choose that and you say, that's what I want, all the, the soldiers that are inside of you that say, you can't have that, that's unsafe, that's bad, they will all pop into the active experience and go, this is stupid. Don't listen to this, Chris Duncan Fowler. You don't want to choose that. Don't go for that. This is bad. This is scary that you can't have this. There'll be tears. There'll be, it'll be intense, right? But we just choose it. We choose that everyone rejects us. And then by doing that, everything pops out and then we're able to treat it down. You see? And then we go into the opposite that says, yes, if everyone praises me and there'll be, there'll be aspects that turn out and go, yeah, it's so good when everyone praises me. And they're actually the same, the same parts, by the way, because they don't want this. They want this. And then, and then they are, and they come out and they go, yeah, this is better. See, this is what we want. And we actually want to treat the emotions that it's better to be praised. You see? And so that we want to get to a place where, you know, if we're rejected or if we're praised, we're just going to be ourselves no matter what. Right. So we want to, we want to do the double bubble and it will, it will bring it down into a neutral place, which is called the wizard's gate. And the wizard's gate, when you step through it is where you, you're not resisting or rejecting one things and you're not trying to get something else. You're just, you're just here. And from here, we just choose to be us. Okay. So it just is. So we'll, we'll probably go through a few times into to both sides of it. Now, just because you think something doesn't mean you're going to make it come true. So we're going to, we're going to go in there. The more that you resist rejection, the more it exists in your field. Okay. And there's, there's no way in, if you want to create something big, you know, there's no way if you want to create a great life to not face rejection, you're going to be rejected by your children. You're going to be rejected by um, society. You're going to be rejected by friends and family and all sorts of people are going to criticize and reject. It's just part of it. They're not going to all agree with you. You know, the only way to be, have everyone agree with you is to basically do nothing. Right. And even then some people don't agree with you doing nothing. You know, you should do more with your life. Then you do more. They say, oh, you're working too hard, you know, and so you make no money and they say, you need to go make money. Stop being, you know, stop being so lazy. So you make millions of dollars. Chris, you're all about the money, <laughs> you know, like it doesn't matter. Someone's already got, always got some opinion, no matter, no matter what you do. Oh, you should work out more. Oh, you're too focused on working out. You know, you're so vain. Oh, you're a bit overweight. Oh, yeah. It's just crazy. So, so we just got to get ourselves completely out of this and just be, just be, just be you, like whatever you want to be, you know, just whatever, like whatever, not what anyone else, you just be you, do you and, and be happy with it, right? All this other nonsense, it's them, it's their life. So you just going to be you. All right. So we got our number uh, of how much we, uh, we reject um, being rejected how much we want to avoid it. So we're going to do the super conscious work. Uh, if you all remember the football field metaphor, what we're going to do is we're going to get all the resistance to pop into the active experience, like little gophers popping up on a football field. And then with simple commands, the super conscious will just smooth all of those little mounds of dirt that the gophers have made, smooth it down, down to, down to zero so that we can easily just play on the field. And so uh, we'll use the double bubble. We'll use this. Uh, does everyone super conscious understand the treatment process? Yeah. So, so it's important to understand that we create it all. Okay. And that the fear of um, being rejected is actually a positive. It's actually a positive. And it's positive because we didn't want to be rejected by family so that they kept us in the family. So I want all aspects of you and parts to realize there's actually no biological way for you not to be in your family. Doesn't matter if you've never met them. Doesn't matter if they're completely different from you. You, you, you biologically can't not be in your family. Like you just, you're in it. As, as an adult, you no longer need to ensure that your parents approve. You see, you no longer need. And so the childish need to seek approval is simply that it's childish. In fact, 
as an adult, the only the only thing that really truly matters is is your being in your truth, in your truth. Yeah. So so there's no way to not. You just you you're there. You 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 know you're created. There's sperm. There's a, there's an egg created. You you're in it. You, you can't not be in it. You're in it. That's it. That's you. But you can choose to to be not seeking validation from them. You see, as a child, you needed their validation to make sure that you got fed. They, you know, that they cared about you. It's part of it. It's sometimes why some of our work doesn't doesn't need to be done for for children, right? But but no longer do we need that wound. Give me a yes if you get it. No longer do we need that. Yeah, that, that's that's fine. That's needed when you're four, five, six, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. That's needed at eighteen. You know, it's not needed now. It's not needed. Uh, so, so simply, um, it's a misguided belief that's been held on since um, since we were we were small. Okay, it's just misguided, and by misguided means we needed it back then, but we don't need it anymore. It's like a, you know, it's like somebody uh, who still has those trainer wheels on their bicycle, you know. Uh, they, we don't need that anymore. You know, let's just, let's just ride. Let's go. Let's be free. We're still holding on to childish stuff, you know? So, so let's finish off by just choosing, choosing to just give forgiving, just choosing for just giving. Yes, brother. I love that. Just choosing to give forgiving, to be us, to give to the world. Uh, when people ask, who are you? You're actually more of a verb than a noun. You're a doing, you're a giving. So just choose to be giving, be in that giving, be, be going without expectation of what's coming back, just being in the giving, okay? Just to give, you know, no expectations. I can't reject if you're not asking for something back because you're just giving. And you can receive different perspectives, but that's fine. You were just happy that you were giving. So let's finish off by choosing it back into our creative structure. So just tune into it, close your eyes, step into the end result. I just choose, and I'm going to lead you through it. I just choose to give. For me, I choose to give. I choose to be me to the full. I'm going to give my best. I'm going to share. I'm going to give. I'm going to be me, and I'm just going to do that. I choose that. I'm going to give it. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to be it. Just going to give it. I'm just going to give it. Some are going to love it, some are not going to love it, but I'm just going to give it. I find all my satisfaction in the giving of my gift, of myself, of my best. I choose that. I choose that 100%. I'm just a gift. <sighs> Great way to finish up, guys. So when you've chosen it, it's done. The universe is moving. You be it. I love you guys.